Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott coming live to you from DIY Dreaming. On this video tutorial, we're going to do three queen bee projects. Um, we're going to be using this adorable stencil from MagnoliaDIY.com. We're not going to use the whole entire thing for each um, piece of it, each different project, but I'm going to show you some fun ideas that I'm excited about and I hope you like them too. So as you're hopping on, say hi, let me know where you're watching from, let me know that I'm not just sitting here in my craft room talking to my phone, <laughs> um, feel free to sprinkle and ask questions and if you want links I'll get those for you at the very end. Okay, so before I came live today, I took this round sign that I purchased from Walmart, it's a little upside, but there we go. I purchased this piece here from Walmart about six months ago, and I think it was around $8. It has the um, insert, the round, and then this, okay? And last summer I did a, um, you can still see a faint outline on the other side, I did a 4th of July project in it. But, so I just flipped it over, painted that, with a little bit of Magnolia, or of uh, Waverly um, craft paint from Walmart in cream. And I stenciled it using just your very basic black chalk paste. Um, and on this particular one, I only did the bee and I only did part of the wreath around it. I did not do the crown and I did not do the bow down here. Because I think after I do the flower bit, I'm going to probably add a real cute little bow, some kind of a little stacked, floppy, messy uh, bow down here. And then I may have another stencil of some sort that says something right here. But what I want to show you for right now with this project is the flower piece of it. So, like I said, I stenciled it about an hour ago. It's completely dry. And now we're going to do the fun part. Let me put this down here further. And I'm sorry if I look like I'm falling over. We're going to do the really fun part, which is the part where we add the flowers. Okay? And I need to have it facing me to be able to see. Okay, so within the last week or so, I made a very productive trip to Dollar Tree. And I picked up these flowers, which are called German status, uh, which are flowers that dry uh, really nice in yellow, purple, pink, and white. Uh, my Dollar Tree is still $1, but yours might be $1.25. I don't know. I thought these would be super cute. Okay, and then what I did is I pulled, you just can pop the heads of the flowers right off easy. You can also pull the, the larger pieces off of it pretty easy, too. Um, okay, let's do one more purple. And one more yellow, so I have equal numbers. Okay, so what you're going to end up with is something that looks like this. This is plastic. There's no metal in these flowers from Walmart. And you're going to want to basically clip as much of the base off as you possibly can. So here's here's one that's clipped, and I just use regular scissors, and here's one that is not. Can you see the difference? This one has the long stem that attached it to the floral pick, and this one I just cut it off. So I just spent a few minutes chopping these off, and I have the little bits all over. I'm gonna have to vacuum. <laughs> or sweep or something, because they want to fly all over the place. But if you don't clip that part off, then your flowers are not gonna sit straight up on your project. Okay, so let me just get these clipped. And um, then I have two more projects to show you, so stay with me. The last one is gonna be really different and really fun. If the, this was a floral pick that actually had any kind of metal in the flowers, then I would use, you know, a metal clipper, a metal trimmer, or a, I don't know what you even call those things. 
um, and not your scissors because you don't want to ruin your scissors, but these are just soft plastic. Okay, so I have these little things everywhere. Those are the little ends that I've just clipped off and now mine are all short, all right? And I've been working on that before I came live. And we're gonna be um, using, see how I can get the most for you view. Okay, we're gonna be using my low temperature hot glue gun because we're gonna be putting our fingers actually on the flowers to hold them down. So I am using my handy dandy Sure Bonder Cool Shot Low Temperature Hot Glue Gun. You can get these everywhere, Walmart, Hobby at Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, um, under $10. And they're a low temperature hot glue gun that I feel like is a little lower than even a regular uh, low temperature glue gun. Don't do this project with a hot, hot glue. Okay, and this um, stencil has these little buds. And we're basically just adding flowers to those um, like in combination or separately or whatever you feel like doing. Two or three, however many you wanna put on each spot. And basically I'm just putting a blob of glue right here. And then I'll stick my first flower into it. And I'm sort of pushing it down. clumps of flowers so I'm going to make most of mine except for the ones at the very very end have more than one color and more than one flower and then I'm just kind of mixing it up adding you know a little yellow here a little pink there, a little purple there. You could do this project with any kind of small, um, small flowers that you have. And the thing, the cool thing about this is they don't even have to be like really good quality flowers. Uh, okay, I'm just looking to see what do I want next. So any small, um, Faux floral will work for this. What color do I want? Let's end with pink right here. And when I when I get to the part, whoops, I need a little more glue. Is that gonna stick? When I get to the part, um, of doing the bow and the doodads on it, I will do something that is coordinating so that all the colors kind of make sense. Pink, purple, yellow. Okay, let's see. I feel like this one needs one more color. Let's add a yellow here. And there's glue strings galore, but I'll just use my heat gun to basically melt those. So what do you think? Isn't that cute and so easy? I love to do projects that are dimensional. Um, and this stencil is super versatile because it has this gorgeous wreath and it has this fabulous bee. Look at the details on that. And then it has a crown right here and it has an awesome bow. And you could use any one of those little elements of this stencil separate or the whole thing together, just absolutely whatever you want. So I would probably do a stencil or something up here that says something, um, a phrase, and then I'll do some kind of a bow. I'll have to dig in my ribbon drawer and see what I can find down here. But I will do that after I'm done here and I'll get pictures and I'll post that here and I'll just post that over at DIY Dreaming. Okay, so that was the first thing I wanted to show you. Uh, the second thing I wanted to show you is this. 
this. Okay, this is an embroidery hoop. Or actually, this is a more than an embroidery hoop. This is one for uh, like doing big projects. Um, can't remember what it's called. But anyways, it's just wood. I found this one at Goodwill about two years ago. And I have used it, taken it apart, used it, taken it apart many times. I like to repurpose things. So in this particular project, which is hanging right up here on my wall all day long, because I love it so much, I used some of the canvas uh, duck fabric uh, from Walmart, but you can get canvas duck fabric anywhere. It's thicker than your usual kind of cotton and a little stiffer and it works great for something like that. So I just put it in my, over the top of my embroidery hoop and then put the top on and then I glued the edges down. Can you see that? Just to make it sort of tidy. Okay, but before I did that, I stenciled the wreath and the bow on here. For this project, you could use either chalk paste or ink. And I used this awesome stencil. Um, it's a quilting laptop hoop. Thank you, Yolanda. I could not remember those words. Yes. And I think I only paid three or four dollars, but I would imagine this, this is expensive if you were to buy it new. You can use any size embroidery hoop that you like. Okay, so I stenciled my canvas, let it dry, and then I put it in the embroidery hoop. And then I stenciled two more pieces of canvas. I want you to look at this close up. Uh, with the bee and the crown. And I did my stuffy thing with that. And then I just glued them onto the canvas in the right spot. So these stuffy things are just like the bazillions of other kinds of stuffies that I've made. Uh, this one is one of my all time favorites. Love this. But those flowers are stuffies made out of canvas. And so is this bee and so is this crown. And then they're just glued on there. And because they're stuffed and raised a little bit, they give you sort of a dimensional look. What do you think? Do you like this? I love this project. Um, so super simple. Because you're not going to ever wash this and you're not going to handle it a lot, it's going to be up on the wall. I really do think that you could get away with using chalk paste on this project with the stencil. Uh, most of the time when I'm using, when I'm stenciling on fabric, I use ink and then I heat set it because the plan is, you know, the tea towel, the t-shirt, the tote bag, the pillow, those things are gonna need to be washed eventually. And I want the ink to stay on there permanent. Uh, but I'm not gonna wash this and it's not gonna get handled a lot. So I think it's okay if you have chalk paste to use that for this kind of a project. Okay, so that was the second thing. And the third project we're gonna do from start to finish. And it just involves one of these. Let me come back up so I can actually see me, sort of. Okay, it involves one of these black canvases, black stretched canvases. All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do our B, and I'm going to do her this way. Um, and this stencil has been used a ton, a ton, 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 so I'm not going to fiddle around with fuzzing it. Gosh, I have fuzz all over me. But if it was new, I would fuzz it before I put it on this canvas. Okay, and the hardest part about this project is going to be to figure out where I am. <laughs> And if I'm straight or what. I'm not going to do any of the, the wreath around it. And I'm not going to do the bow or the crown. I just want to do the bee. And I do want it to be 
pretty straight and pretty centered if possible. Okay, so let's flip it over and let me just kind of feel the edges and see what I think. I feel like it needs to come over this way just a smidge. And then I'm just pressing it down, and all we're doing is the B, okay? And I thought it would be fun and different to do it in this new top paste that Magnolia has that's called Glittering Gold. I haven't used it before. We're also going to use a palette knife to create a really cool effect around the edge. But for this start, what we're going to do is just, I'm going to stir up. If you want links to any of this, just say link in the comments and I'll get that for you as soon as I'm finished. So you don't have to hunt it down. I'm going to put, let's see, I don't know how much we'll need. I'm just putting a couple blobs on there. And then I'm going to literally just push it through the holes on the stencil. I'm not going to go over and over and over it and over and over and over because that's when I tend to mess it up. And also, that's when you can have a tendency to push the excess medium that you're trying to apply underneath your stencil, and it gets all smeary and blurred looking. So I've got it applied to cover everything, and now I'm just going to go over it and pull off the excess blobs. And then we'll peek see what we think. Can we see our B? Oh, I hope so. I hope, 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 hope so. Oh, yes, we can. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Okay, you ready? Wow, that is fabulous. I'll hold it up for you in just a second. I'm taking my stencil over to the little bathtub, my little yucky tub over here of water. And I'll just dry my hands off. And I'm just putting it in the water to soak until I can get to the kitchen sink to spray it off with cool water and lay it on the counter to dry. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, there's so many different things you could do with this at this point. But what I decided to do was to use my palette knife to kind of create an interesting edging. And so I'm just going to put a little teeny bit of this, this gold chalk paste on a paper plate. And then this is a palette knife from Dollar Tree. It came in a set, I don't remember, that I think included two of this style and one of this for $1 or $1.25 or $1.50, depending on whatever your store charges. And I really like these plastic ones almost as well as an actual professional palette knife. So now I'm just going to kind of dip my palette knife in my chalk paste and maybe offload just a little bit. And I'm holding on to it like this. And we're gonna just see what happens. I want varying amounts of gold to show on the edge. Can you see that? Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so pretty. I'm also gonna do this part right here. project that I did with this similar kind of technique that I'll pull out in just a second to show you. So again, I've just dipped my little palette knife in that. I'm holding it with my finger right here and I'm just kind of going along the edge 
And these canvases have like bumps. The, the canvas is not completely flat and smooth. And those bumps grab the um, chalk paste, this glittering gold chalk paste that's on here. And um, just has a really nice effect. I don't want it to be all completely even, so I'm not aiming for that. I want it to look more rustic, and I think it does. Let me do these two little edges just a little bit. Okay, and then let's lift it up to show you. What do you think? Isn't that pretty? So, when you're doing a stenciling project, you could do this on anything, really. A, a white canvas, um, a burlap canvas, watercolor paper. You could probably do, get, do something like this on wood, on a chalkboard, um, just using the chalk paste. So in case you're thinking that these are not super versatile, uh, they really are. And this is a beautiful one. I'm so glad I ordered it. It's called Glittering Gold Chalk Paste. And I used it both for the stencil and to do the palette knife edging around it. So let me grab this other project just to show you real quick. Um, I have two of them, actually. These ones I did at Christmas time, same exact idea. It's a black canvas. And you can get black canvases at Walmart, um, just in the craft section by the other painting supplies. So I stenciled this for Christmas, and um, this was a Christmas stencil, and then I used, and this was white chalk paste, then I used this same tool to do the edging in white chalk paste. Isn't that pretty? I absolutely love this look, and I think our bee would look great in white as well. But I wanted to use my new glittering gold. Okay, now let me show you the other one. This is another one that I did at Christmas time. It's a black canvas. And these black canvases are, the big one was probably $6, $5. And this one was probably three, four dollars. I can't remember for sure. It's been a while since I bought them. And they usually come in a pack of two. Anyways, so I did the exact same thing. This is white chalk paste on the canvas with white chalk paste and the um, palette knife around the edge. So that is what I wanted to show you guys. Here's our little bee. I love the bee um, stencil just because I think it's so super versatile. It has all these different pieces that you can use in a lot of different ways. It has the wreath, and there's a pretty bow right here. It looks like this one. You see the pretty bow? You can just use the pieces. And then it has the bee, and then it has the crown. And any one of those things could be used by itself or in combination with other stencils um, or however you want to do it. So, did I spray those? Um, I did not spray this one. I didn't remember to. But it turned out okay. I will definitely spray it. And what is she asking about? She's asking about this. Uh, and probably it might have been even crisper if I had sprayed it first. Thank you so much for reminding me. Okay, um, so this is a clear matte sealer from Rust-Oleum. And I usually will spray wood or canvas projects with it before I stencil because it kind of closes down all the pores and everything and it makes it so that your stencil will give you a real crisp impression and then I'll spray it over the top when it's all finished just to make it permanent. So I did actually do that with these. And I may have used a gloss. Let me show you what that looks like too. 
My, um, mine are both from Walmart because that's like two miles from my house and I can get groceries there and take care of, you know, multiple things at the same time. This is the matte clear and this is the, the gloss. And these are under $5, so like three fifty four dollars $4 and they last forever. So, yep, that's the projects. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Let's see, stand these up straight. Uh, if you want links, just say link and I'll get that for you. Do I let the sealer dry before I stencil? Yeah, but it takes like 20 seconds at, because I don't put it on super thick. So these were the projects. And if you have questions or want links, just let me know. Feel free to sprinkle. I'll get everything all finished up. This one's done, but when it's dry, I'll spray it. I might spray it with the glossy. I don't know. Um, and um, I think they're pretty simple, and I hope that you saw how super versatile that bee thing is. Um, just let me know if you have any questions. And do a this or a this, or say something to me in the comments, and check to see if you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming. Uh, and I have good stuff coming up over the weekend. We'll have a nice Christ and crafting on Sunday that I hope you'll join me for. Um, that is my absolute favorite day of the week to craft. I am not sure what we'll be doing, but we'll be doing something good. Uh, a craft that is Christ focused and then we'll actually go into the Bible to see what our Heavenly Father has to say about whatever our theme was. So those are really good and I would love to have you join me for that. Um, so make sure that you're connected to this page and you've got your notifications on and um, I will see you guys possibly later today. Okay, bye everyone. Thanks.